Good morning and welcome to the XM.com weekly market update. And with me again is Peter Maguire, the CEO of XM. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Andrew. Plenty of data going on. Yeah. Plenty of movement. Well, what is it? Just over a week to the US election. Week That's today, yeah. Certainly ramping up now compared to a month or two ago. Absolutely. So plenty of commentary there. We'll have a quick look at these markets. Aussie dollar under a fair bit of pressure there. Oh. Partly because of the hmm. issues within Australia where it's struggling a bit, but yes. also the strength of the US dollar. And China. And China, yeah. So it's a three-way yeah. split, but yeah. yes, certainly, yeah, you know, sub-66, Andrew, that's been, a, you know, one-way traffic as that chart demonstrates, and it's been a great month to go short Aussie dollar, mm. and, you know, when you're down the best part of, you know, three and a bit cents, that's an enormous move in a small window of time. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how quickly it can turn as well, and oh. a lot of it's on the back of the US where the expected rate cuts, they will probably still come, but not to the extent that people no. were expecting so and that obviously affects currencies not only like the Aussie but others as well which we'll touch on shortly but sure. uh, inflation number comes out in Australia this week as well that's looking to be sub three percent for the first time in a long quite, time quite a long time but that gets it back within that two to three percent that's right range which the RBA wants so does that open the door for a pre-Christmas rate cut? It could. I mean, you know, I, I'm pretty convinced that it won't happen because of the uh, Melbourne Cup, and mm. I'm not suggesting there's any correlation between that and the, and the um, RBA, but I don't think it's going to happen there. And if it did no. happen, it may happen in December. As, uh, there's no meeting, I believe, in January, so there'd be the next one would be February. Maybe they're going to wait for summer and see how everything rolls across mm. that from a trade perspective, retail sales, Christmas and everything else rolled into one because that's our summer period and that's when everything's showtime as far as consumption. It'd be interesting. It's quite a, if that number comes in sort of sub 3% this week, which yes. highly likely it will, to then wait till February for a week is quite a... Oh, it's three months. It's a long time. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Another country with plenty of rate cuts and plenty of issues is Canada. So they've sure. dropped 50 basis points. They've had a few cuts in a row now. Yeah, um, three. Their inflation is now sub 2%. Uh, the GDP is not flash, so no. you would expect a lot more rate cuts. I would think. think so. That's what they're saying, and uh, it seems to be one-way traffic for uh, the Bank of Canada. Um, their growth numbers are atrocious, mm. and unemployment's high. So, yeah, that's all being, I suppose, represented in the numbers. And, yeah, uh, yeah the currency's been, for a commodity trading currency, it's going very, very poorly. Yeah. The same as ours and same as the Kiwis. Yeah, similar situation to what we have here. So, um, US that. interest rates still creeping higher. Yeah. St <laughs> that, that rise in this month has been nothing short of breathtaking. Yeah. I think it's up 53, 54 basis points. I think there was a low of around about 3.8, and now mm. it's at 4.3. So, you know, for the 10 year or close on it. So that's just enormous, Andrew. Yeah, it is. For, particularly for a for window it, of a month. Yeah, and in interest rate markets. Yeah. Where these bond prices don't move a great deal. That's right. So that is a huge move. So, oh. uh, which is basically telling us that the interest rates in the US will be uh, probably a lot less than what people were expecting. So. Yeah, well, the hard landing has now turned into a soft landing and there mm. may be no landing. Mm. That's what they're saying. And yeah. Is there, I think the 50 basis points, there's no one in that camp as far as a cut. And that was guaranteed. That was nearly a baked in cut. We cut it 50 in October 7. Mm. Now it's now it's 25 yeah. and it's probably a 50 to 60% probability. There's a 40% probability of the numbers are just increasing by the day that there's going to be no rate cut. Yeah. Well, it seems like that. And as you say, hard, soft, no landing. You sort yeah. of think, you look at the economy and the way it's traveling out there, that They've landed basically. And yeah. It's just business as usual. So, yeah. And there's no the recession. We've got no, GDP this yeah, week. Yeah, and the recession is not even on the horizon at the no. moment. So, but yeah, plenty of numbers still to come out. Uh, oil, wow. After what happened with Israel when they hit Iran, but not anything too crucial, as in no oil facilities, no, no nuclear facilities. But uh, talk about volatility. That's another good market. Oh, traders. mind blowing. I mean, yeah, this time yesterday, the market opened and we were down 4% for crude and it ended up being down just over 6% for WTI for the day. That's an enormous sell off. Yeah. Um, I, in a lot of ways, it was telegraphed. That's what the, the analysts are saying as far as that Israel slash Iran incident over the weekend. Uh, they flew over Syrian airspace. That was all documented and everyone mm. knew that it was going to happen. So it wasn't an element of surprise. Yeah. And then that happened to, um, it was a mild attack on infrastructure. Yes. And it wasn't anything dramatic. So in turn, all that war premium or risk 
was just stripped out of the market. Yeah. It's a, it's stripped right. out. It is. It's very odd. You, you go back through history and any of that sort of conflict, you'll see these prices, the opposite to what's happening. Yes. So, but it's... Yeah, pretty strange what's going on. You know, on. I've got analysts now are saying it's going to be a 50 to $55, maybe even $60 for Brent. So that means to take another 10 bucks out of it, mm. I don't know whether that's going to happen. I think there's still enough geopolitical concerns to really create more, I suppose, hardship for the consumer. But let's just see. Mm. It's going to be an interesting two months. We're a week from an, uh, from an election as well. That's right. We'll get through that. Plenty of data out later this week. Over in the, uh, Europe, you've got the Eurozone as well as uh, France, Germany, and Italy coming out with uh, inflation and GDP numbers. Yep. GDP in the US. 3% they're tipping, same yeah. as Q2. Mm. And the Atlanta Fed model saying 3.4%. And, the, and some are even saying it could be even 3.5%. Mm. I mean, and you've got the magnificent seven. I think there's five of them reporting in the next 48 hours. Yep. They start today. There's mm. two and then two and one. So they're, they're supposed to be breathtaking numbers, especially from Apple and so on. Yeah. Tesla was up 22%. Mm. In, it was a one session or two sessions. Oh, I think it was across two sessions actually. Yeah. yeah so what a come, rise! I think it's come back slightly, but yeah, it's um yeah huge. But um and the, as we said last week, the banks have all reported pretty solid numbers once again. Yeah. There there are some mixed results coming out, but um yeah, obviously everyone's waiting on the big tech companies, which you would think they'd be pretty good numbers again. Well, well, yeah, see how they drop, but that's. Mm. Uh, it could really put a little bit of fire underneath the equity markets and give it more uptick. Mm. And I think then once you get past the election as well, which I, I think the markets are they're pretty much past it already sort of thing because they look so far ahead anyway, do you get a bit of a, a run into Christmas like the, the Santa Claus rally? So. Could well do. Mm. Yeah, well, There's nothing to stop it from happening this year. No, no, unless something was to dramatically happen from a mm. geopolitical standpoint or something else. I mean, there's a, a, the war drums are beating. There's mm. no doubting that as well. North for Korea. All that. Oh, well, yes, I've got to. Yeah, mate. Yeah, hundred mm. percent. But uh, we've just got to see how all of that, in you know, internalizes and what, what it produces, and uh, you know, time will tell. Yeah. All right. We'll keep an eye on things. Plenty of data out later in the week. We'll keep an eye on. Oh, earnings. non-farm payrolls at Friday. That's right. Yeah, we've got that as well. So yeah. uh, we'll keep an eye on earnings as well and uh, recap on all that next week. Look forward to okay. it. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Andrew. And that's the XM.com weekly market update. Thank <laughs> you.